Hi, my name is Turk, and this is actually the first Bounty Thursday of 2021. So, welcome to New Year. There is going to be a lot of fun hunting for you, and hopefully there's going to be a lot of opportunities for you this year. I know it's going to be it for me, but... Before we kick it off, I would like to say thank you to everyone that's been uh, watching my show last year. There's been a lot of you that's been engaged in the things that I do, and I'm very, very happy for that. Uh, and I will try to keep up the same tempo uh, this year as well. So um, here's to an uncertain future. First off, any of the tools and scripts and setups and stuff that you hear me talk about on this show is meant for educational purposes only. And it's up to you as the user to make sure that you're safe when you're using them. You just don't fire things off and see what happens. It's dangerous. So read the code, play around with it and yeah, get an idea what it does before you fire it off. So if you're into server-side template injection bugs, I definitely recommend you to check out the video that Pawn Function made. And he even supplied us with a server-side template injection EC2 follow-along image, where it's in four steps, just explains you how to do it. And if you want to dig deeper into template injections, I recommend you to head over to gosecure.github.io to check out the workshop and the video that was cre created by Philippe Tro, um, where you can just download, you can git clone the GoSecure template injection workshop and, and just run that on your box. Um, set, up, set it up in Docker and uh, you're ready to go with a vulnerable uh, lab for you to play around with. It's really cool. It has some Twig, PHP, Python, and, and Velocity Java stuff. So definitely, if you want to practice your temple injections, that's a good way to start. So you're about to test this website, right? And you want to make sure that you don't have any of those annoying uh, stuff that will pre prevent you from executing your awesome XXS payloads. Uh, Running a vanilla version of Firefox or Chrome might just be an issue there, specifically since it will leave footprints of your normal day-to-day -day life in it. So I would definitely recommend you to check out NCC Group's Autochrome. It, it just downloads and it fires off a streamlined version of Chromium for you. So you have a really clean and ready uh, instance to use every time. This is something that more or less is built into the newer versions of Burp, but if you're not using that and uh, you want to still stay a little bit safe and uh, make sure that you don't have those pesky XXS auditors in there, uh, check out Autochrome. Okay, let's talk about burnout for a second. It's very normal for any hacker, developer, coder, or a very technical person that lives a lot of their life up here in the headspace um, to end up in that. And it's nothing to be ashamed about. It happens all the time. Uh, but there are, are a couple of ways that you can actually deal with that and just help you to not end up in that situation. And I'm not talking about the, the burnout where it is that you're just getting bored of a project. That's, that's another thing. But if you're dealing with it, that you're actually just draining yourself on the things that you do, there's a couple of steps to solve that. And my friend, friend Stefan Rouse or CEOSEC has just written really, really good post on it. Uh, I've done a couple of motivational talks around the subject and it, it all kind of boils down to you having a taking care of yourself a little bit and getting some exercise and you're finding more happiness in your day-to-day -day routine. Uh, but if you want to head to start, head over to Stefan's blog and, and read that because it's, it's really, really good. Your mental health is important. Okay, so Corey Arthur has brought us Logger++ and a plethora of other amazing, really, really cool tools for Burp. But when, when he released Burp Customizer, my heart just bumped twice. And as soon as the purple version came out, the dark purple version came out on, uh, on Corey's GitHub, and I implemented it instantaneously. And um, I love it. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Burp's Dracula layout, and I stick with the light uh, version for way too long. But now, I'm a convert. So, welcome purple dark mode. I just 
wish there was a stack template in there. Okay, I've, I've been a huge fan of Axiom since day one, and the things that Pry and his band of pirates has been created lately is, is quite amazing. The speed that is currently running at when you're having distributed mass scan, distributed nmap, distributed FFUF um, to, to scan all these huge data sets is pretty amazing. Um, it's running in, or I am primarily running it inside droplets on DigitalOcean, and it's paid by the hour. So, um, but then again, it's actually just paid by the hour. So it doesn't matter how many, um, you, don't, you don't need to have a lot of boxes running all the time. It's just that time to run those uh, fleets and, and gather the data. But yeah, distributed continuous scanning definitely is a thing. It helps you to stay underneath the radar a bit since you're distributing the workload to not just one or two VPSs. Maybe you're having 60 uh, plus inside your distribution. That's when it gets really, really interesting. Um, so hats off for this project and thank you for open sourcing it. Um, it's so cool. Uh, you can combine this with Nuclei, you can combine it with HTTPX. All these tools are in there and Axiom has actually been my primary uh, workload or um, VPS that I spin up for, to do any kind of testing that I do. I don't do fleets for everything, but if I need a quick box to spin up that's pre-configured with all the web hacking stuff that I need, I run Axiom. It, it, it's that simple. If you're looking for a new gig and you don't know where to be, and HackerOne is hiring, there's uh, there's a lot of open positions there currently. If you head over to uh, HackerOne slash careers, I have nothing bad to say about those people. It, it's just through and through, great culture, great people that work with their uh, great organization, great leadership, and a lot of room to grow. So if you're interested in joining, a great company I, I would suggest for you to at least check out the openings uh, over at their career page. So a while back I talked about Ferox Buster and Epi just updated it to the latest version. It's currently running on version 1.12.1 uh, and a really cool update that's been implemented this time is that any 4.3 responses uh, that you get uh, could possibly be a directory. So what it's doing now that it's kicking in, in a, a recursive scan automatically against all four threes to see if it's actually a directory and if there's any files behind it. I think this is a really nice, cool feature. And if you haven't tried Ferox Buster out, I would suggest you try it out now. And this episode is sponsored by no other than the amazing people over at Integrity. Thank you so much for supporting the show and thank you for all the work that you do and support you give to the content creators inside our community. There's a lot of bug bounty, AppSec, CTF content creators out there that are getting support by Integrity and I'm very, very grateful for that. And recently, uh, one of my favorite programs, Visma, just moved over from HackerOne to Integrity and just launched their program there. So if you want to hack on some nice uh, European companies, I would suggest you head over to go.integrity.com stoke and sign up for their platform. Um, you can hack on Visma and get paid in, in euros, which is uh, pretty nice now. If you're like me, a big fan of all the research that James Keller puts out, I definitely recommend you to head over to his uh, practical web cache poisoning paper um, where he now outlines the scenarios and how you can find cache poisoning vulnerabilities but it, in those situations where you can't replicate it outside Burp Suite. It's really cool and it's such a great research and if you're not into web cache poisoning, I can recommend you to dig deep into it. It's a lot of fun stuff going on in there and it seems to be available in the most common places. I got C. Shano's methodology book. It's a nice book and I recommend you to get it for yourself. But during a couple of days in, yeah, during the holidays, I think he put it up for a PDF sale online and a lot of people just stole it. and and pirated it and sent it through a lot of uh, 
Telegram channels. Uh, I thought that was uncool. He worked on his methodology. A lot of us creators work really hard on the things that we do to get stuff out, to help you level up your game and stealing that stuff isn't the way to do it. So um, support your creators. Yep, that's how it is. But I think that's about everything we have for this week. So I hope to see you around next week. I'm going to try to keep this uh, up and running now, depending on how much information that hits me and, and how many cool tools I found and other stuff. Or, or maybe, maybe we'll just evolve this thing and, and have some interviews with cool people that I like as well. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But the future will tell. Thank you, so much for, uh, thank you so much for the support that you've been giving me so far. And I'm really looking forward to see you in the future. So for now, stay curious and uh, I see you around.